All right, what's up? I'm KBHD here, and today was Google's I.O., their annual developer conference, and usually we don't see a ton of hardware at events like this, but this one, for whatever reason, we got a ton of hardware, or at least hardware announcements. So there's kind of three levels of announcements going on here. So first of all, there's the right around the corner coming up next stuff. That's two things, and they're gonna be going on sale in the next month or so. Then there's the later this year section. So we did get a bit of a sneak preview at some more fall hardware, some stuff that we're actually gonna get fully unveiled later this year. And then there's the on the horizon section, which is they went ahead and pre-announced a piece of 2023 hardware for some reason, but we'll get to that. But first of all, in the next up section, Pixel 6a and Pixel Buds Pro. These are both things that we kind of knew were coming, but now we're finally getting all the details of these announcements. So for the Pixel 6a, it is essentially a slightly smaller, slightly bumped down Pixel 6, and it will retail for 449. So honestly, from what we can tell here, the 6a will be very similar to the Pixel 6. You can see the design, same camera bar, same glass, same software with all the material you and live captions and speech recognition and camera features and it's powered by the same exact Tensor chip from the flagship Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. But you know, those phones are going on past six months old now, so you can imagine the price of manufacturing some of those parts is starting to go down. But the real main difference between the Pixel 6a and the Pixel 6, which is 599, is the display and cameras, which is really interesting. So for the display, it is smaller a little bit. The more premium pixels are both pretty big. This will have a 6.1 inch, 1080p, 60 hertz G OLED display, which is still big, but it's now the smallest pixel. So then cameras are the other interesting thing. So now Google telling us that cameras are one of the areas where they saved costs from the Pixel 6 means that, yeah, okay, this A is gonna have cheaper cameras than the Pixel 6, which worried me at first. So it is still a standard and an ultra wide, and you can kind of see a slightly new visual design in the camera bar, which I'll touch on more in a second. But on the spec sheet, it actually tells us it is the Sony IMX363. That's the sensor for the main camera, which is actually the same 12 megapixel sensor that we've seen in some of those older pixels, Pixel 4, Pixel 3, Pixel 2. This is a tried and true older sensor. So cheaper, yes, but also probably not bad. But other things like materials and battery appear to be about the same, although do definitely have to test that stuff. I, I would suggest getting subscribed to see that review video when it comes out here. Battery could be an interesting one because this is the smallest, lowest refresh rate display in any Pixel, but it still has the same Tensor chip. So we'll see how that gets handled. Could be amazing. But the other specs I can confirm are six gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage, IP67 water resistance. It does have an in-display fingerprint reader. There's a 4,400 milliamp hour battery with 18 watt charging, but there is no mention of wireless charging. And then sub six 5G and millimeter wave 5G with specific models and five years of Android security updates. So that's the Pixel 6a and that's the new budget smartphone, but it's launching alongside a new high-end set of earbuds from Google, Pixel Buds Pro. So if we have Pixel Buds A series, I looked on Google store, that's actually the only one they're selling right now. So the A series for a hundred bucks is like regular AirPods basically. And then Pixel Buds Pro for 200 bucks would be sort of equivalent to AirPods Pro. So this is a $199 noise canceling pair of wireless earbuds. They do have a transparency mode. They'll have multi-device connectivity compatible with Android, iOS, and computers. Google Assistant's built in. They have IPX4 sweat resistance. And overall, the design, I'm gonna say it looks pretty tame. You know, you can see the mics. Each earbud has three microphones. You got the silicon tips in front of an 11 millimeter driver. And the case looks basically the same as the original Pixel Buds with the black and white design and the magnet and wireless charging. The quoted battery life is 11 hours of listening or seven hours with active noise cancellation turned on. Basically, I feel like the differentiating factor with these, especially when we get them and, and listen to how they sound, is gonna come from the six core audio chip on board, which also apparently will have a lot to do with the noise cancellation, the transparency mode, and just overall the way they sound. Now, I've been waiting a long time for a pair of earbuds with noise cancellation and a transparency mode that rivals AirPods. AirPods still to this day have far and away the best transparency mode I've ever heard in any pair of headphones. So I'm looking forward to maybe Pixel Buds stepping their game up in that 
dimension. It's just one part of headphones. Um, but yeah, the competition has a lot of other things going for them. So we'll see how the Pixel Buds stack up. But yeah, that's what's up next. That's the stuff that'll be on sale this summer. But then Google went ahead and gave us a little bit of a preview of some stuff that's coming up this fall, including a full design reveal of the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro and a new Pixel Watch, finally. So this is our limited first look at the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro. So the details, of course, are way more confined with this stuff, but you can see the new colors here, and you can also see a bit more of that camera design and super bold, big camera circles in the camera bar. And an extra detail is we also know that that glass is soft touch, which I am very excited about. So they've sort of gone back and forth on soft touch, but if you remember the Pixel 3s with the soft touch glass, I remember I really liked that back of a phone finish. If it's anything like that, I'm very excited about it. And seeing as there is a black 7 Pro at the bottom, I'm thinking that's probably gonna end up being the one I prefer. Although Matt White typically does a great job hiding fingerprints, so we'll see. This phone will have the next generation Tensor chip and it will launch with Android 13, but that's pretty much all we know at this point. So yeah, new phone coming out this fall, Pixel 7 and 7 Pro, new chip, new colors, new matte finish, and then yeah, I guess we can also technically see it still has a port at the bottom and it definitely has speakers, all the classic stuff. Some new colors. I'm not sure how I feel about this gray with the green undertone, but it does contrast well with the gold. But probably the more interesting preview we got is the one of the new Pixel Watch. They're finally doing it this fall. We're gonna have, I mean, theoretically, maybe a competitor to the Apple Watch, but sort of in the Android world. I've been waiting for this for a long time. It's a sort of a result of their collaboration, or I guess purchase of Fitbit. And this is it. This is the Pixel Watch. So, okay, it's a circular stainless steel design and it is a very simple silhouette as you can see. Not a whole lot to set it apart on the outside, but I do like that it is simple. And it has what they're calling a tactile crown for input, though it's also a touchscreen. And it has interchangeable bands and it runs Wear OS. This is the Pixel Watch that we've been, I mean, hearing so much about for so long and waiting for. It's clearly got some solid bezels all the way around. I mean, that's the first thing I notice when the screen is on. And I guess I'm judging just by eyeballing these lifestyle photos, but it looks like it's about the same size as the smaller Apple Watch. I'm thinking maybe around 40 millimeters. There isn't any mention of two different sizes, like a small and a large. I think it would make sense, but they didn't say. But basically that's all we really know, know about the new Pixel Watch. Again, this is something that we're gonna get way more details on when it actually does get fully unveiled in October, whenever their event is. But there are a bunch of things that I'm also hoping for. Like I'm hoping it has a bright, efficient, crispy OLED display. You know, this UI they're showing has a lot of black and the black bezel clearly goes all the way around. So I'm hoping that it's an OLED so it can sort of seamlessly blend into the bezel instead of being really obvious and ugly like a cheaper LCD. I'm also, of course, hoping for good battery life, at least a full day. And if it's gonna be a premium price, I'm also hoping it has things like good haptics and good performance. These animations of the UI showing smart home controls and checking notifications, like, it's cool. But again, I definitely wanna play with it myself. One thing to note though, is this is basically gonna act like a Fitbit. Like it seems like most of the, the fitness tracking and sleep tracking and stuff like that, you need the Fitbit app to work for. So it's gonna act just like a Fitbit in that way. And then Wear OS is gonna work the way you typically expect it to paired with an Android phone. And then they've said there will be a cellular option. So you, the watch can work without the phone and it'll do activity and sleep tracking and stuff like that through Fitbit. And also it appears this will just be working specifically with Android phones, probably best with the Pixel, but with Android phones and not the iPhone. Because in classic Apple fashion, lots of the stuff that the Apple Watch can do, no other smartwatch has access to. So this, this is very much an Android smartwatch. So yeah, stay tuned for more details on that later. But yeah, then last but not least, this <laughs> was the announcement we got basically zero information on, but Google did officially say that they're going to be dropping a Pixel tablet in 2023. That's what they've told us. That, that's kind of all we know. Like we don't know any of the specs. We don't know what time of year it'll come out. We don't know what it'll even really be called. Technically, we do know it will be on the larger side and on the premium side. So I'm thinking like 
iPad Air to iPad Pro type price range and equivalent, but it feels like they're not really committing to anything else yet as far as the tablet goes. I guess visually, basically, we just have this shot of the Pixel portfolio where we can see that there is a tablet and it'll definitely have a camera and speakers and presumably a screen on the other side. But yeah, that's it. It's really interesting that they're deciding to show off some of this stuff so early. It kind of reminds me on one hand of Sony who will announce a phone early in the year and then six months later it'll finally come out and all the hype is gone and everybody forgot about it. But on the other hand, this is Google we're talking about and they've always been leaking things constantly. I mean, they try to get ahead of the leaks. This feels like them just going, hey, you know what? Instead of the phone leaking for the next six months, we'll just tell people about it and take advantage of that because Otherwise, you just lose the hype and your own messaging. So yeah, let me know what you think is the most exciting or what you're looking forward to the most of this new Google stuff. I'm definitely interested in, in the watch, actually. I wanna see what that's like on the wrist and to actually use, but let me know in the comments section below. We'll talk about it. But yeah, that's been it. Thanks for watching. Also, random shout out, but the iPod was officially discontinued this week. Probably one of the products everyone watching this video has at some point owned some version of. So, RIP, press F in the, in the chat to pay your respects. All right, catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Really